Saints can be hypocritical without knowing. We talk about holiness. It's a lifestyle it is. It's the way of the Lord in which no man shall see God. What is your faith? My faith is in Christ. I believe in holiness. I teach the apostle doctrine, which is a doctrine of holiness. The word Christianity is not in the scriptures, but the word Christian is. A true Christian is one who walks in holiness. And the only teaching that can give you true holiness is the apostle doctrine. However, there are other doctrines that are a form of godliness, but they deny the power. And sometimes these form of godliness bring us to shame. The Bible says, come out from among them and be separate. You have Christian faith, so-called Christian faith, that live a completely separate life from the world. And they've been doing it for a hundred years or more. And they're wealthy. And they prosper. They have land. And many people use their, not on the other man, but many people begin to use their cities as tourist sites. Just to see how they are still living, prospering, without the technology. As a matter of fact, one writer says that when our computer age clashes, and when the, the people with the wrong intentions hack into our system, shut down everything which is computerized. They said everything was shut down. They said, but now this group of people have the answer. They will not be shut down because they have learned in this day and time to survive without depending on the technology. They got their problems. They got their false teaching. But and I think it's safe to say that God will look at some Holy Ghost filled people and say that the Amish will receive more tolerance in the day of judgment than you. Because they really came out. They came out and were suffering. Wrong teaching. But they had that part right. One man interviewed a family and they were shocked that the children never heard of Michael Jackson years ago. You don't know Michael Jackson? The family said, no. He said, you don't know Beyonce? The family says, no. And the news reporter was shocked. Now they use some technology, but very little. But what I'm trying to say is, they come out. So if anybody were to say, if we, can, if we came out, we can't survive, they are witness against you. Because they're still surviving and pretty wealthy. They're pretty wealthy people. Other groups have come out and don't have what Holy Ghost filled people have. But they really live without being governed by the world. As a matter of fact, one of the reasons why we can have homeschooling is because of these people. For years, they didn't send their children to the public school system. And up north, government got a hold of it and started persecuting them. And I didn't know until recently that when your children enter into the public school system, they belong to them. And it's against the law for you not to send them to school. You can't keep them home for your own personal reasons. We were told, by, told this by one of the head people. Amen. She said, I know it sounds strange, but you may have a personal family matter. Maybe the family had an argument and you decided to stay at home for two or three days just to regroup. She said, we'll be knocking at your door and this fellow will come the detective, and he will have his gun. Now she's telling this to parents. Mm -hmm. She said, I know it sounds strange, but you don't have a right to keep your child home from school. You don't have a right. Are you serious? They will come knocking at your door 
And you can be arrested and fined for every day missed. I couldn't believe what I heard. Because my children are not in the system. But I, I could not believe what I heard. You mean to tell me? You telling me? And they said this. That if the babysitter doesn't show up, you cannot leave the teenager at home to keep the child. You're breaking the law. You leave your job or get another babysitter. Oh, you serious? And that's a law. When a lot of the public school teachers don't send their children to public schools. But these people, back in the 80s, I believe it was, they taught their own children. And when the government came in to arrest them and get the children because they had land, they told their children, run into the woods. These are American children. Amish kids. So they ran into the woods. All the children ran. And when the government would go, they come back. When they come again, they ran. Run into the woods. A journalist got a hold of it and began to write about it and began to say it. It's unconstitutional. How can you force people to put their children in the system. How can you say it's illegal for people to teach their own children? And it, it got media attention. And I thank God for it because at that time, when there was no law, I pulled my children out. I said, we would teach them, and there was no law. I said, but I ain't sending them back. All the stuff was going on, I pulled them out, and we began to teach our own children against the law, because there was no law. But we pulled them out. But thank God, God knows all things, right? Amen. As we pulled them out, that battle was going on. And the year we pulled them out, they finally passed the law. You see? Because of these other people withstanding, they gave us the right to teach our own children, which was always our right. But you have some Holy Ghost filled people that don't have the guts to stand up for holiness. But yet we want to point fingers at them and say how they're going to hell. Well, they might, and then a whole bunch of us might not be far behind them. Because holiness is what it is. It's a coming out. Y'all need to hear this. Holiness is a coming out, not a joining to. You are holy because God is. Now I said this once, I'll say it again. If Jesus was here right now in the flesh, young brothers, young sisters, everybody, could he walk with you amongst and you take him everywhere you go and he can sit with you and indulge in everything you do. Now, if you say no, then God is greater than your heart. If you say no, will he condone, accept everybody you accept? Will he sit down with them and fellowship? Or when you get to the door of one place, he'll stop and say, you know I can't go in there. Or he'll say, you know I can't do this. Could he follow you? Could he be friends with your friends? Could he hang with you? I thought about it, and I, I, I realized there might be a couple of things I might need to change. Be on the safe side. And if you say, well, Bishop, there are, and if you are honest, and if you know in your heart, there are some things that I, I just couldn't. I wouldn't want the Lord to participate in. 
That's a confession. You're saying that there's something that God might not accept. Make sense? Well, you're, you're, we're already judged. Young brothers, young sisters, church members, the games you play, the things you do, the music you listen to, if you don't think God would do these things as such in the way in which you're doing it. He understands there's liberty. But if you don't think he would accept it in the way in which you're doing it, what's well, so ever not a faith is sin? then you need to understand. It is true we use the world, but don't abuse it. But in the way in which you're using it, if you don't think he would accept it, then if your Holy Ghost feel, you've already exposed him to it. You all understand me? You've already taken him there. So if you're judging, you got to ask him for it. In the book of Acts, chapter 2, after they had preached the first gospel message, Acts 2, 44, the uh, story of 42, Acts 2, uh, 41, rather, and then they that gladly received his word were baptized. And the same day they were added unto them about 3,000 souls. And they continued steadfast in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking the bread and in prayer. And fear came upon every soul, that many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. And all that believed were together and had all things common, and sold their possessions and goods, and parted them to all men as every man had need. And they continued daily with one accord in the temple, breaking bread from the house to house. They eat their meat with singleness and gladness and singleness of heart. Praising God, having favor with all the people, and the Lord added to the church daily, such as should be saved. On the day of Pentecost, people came from all over the world to worship the Pentecostal feast. The Holy Ghost was poured out, the apostles got up and preached the first message. As a result, over 3,000 people received that message. But the beautiful thing about it is that many of those people never went back home. Not to stay. This was the first time the true gospel was preached, and they found the true message. They went home, they sold all their goods and possessions, and they came back. True holiness will cause you to leave everything else to follow Christ. Amen. But a lot of church folks leave holiness to follow the world. Amen. True holiness calls you out. True holiness will not tell you, I'm afraid to move. Because my job wants me to move, but you're walking away from truth. But true holiness will say, hey, I haven't found the truth, now I'm going to build my life around it. Amen. This is what they did. And they sold all, and they gave, and the community was born. And they had all things in common. The coming out, being separate, is not a new message. It was a message from the beginning. In the book of Genesis, when God created the heavens and the earth, listen carefully. After everything was created, the Bible says he planted a garden eastward in Eden. And he took the man and placed him in the garden. The man wasn't in the garden. God took the man from the world and placed him in a separate place called the garden. Come out from among them and be ye separate, said the Lord. This was established in the beginning. And when Adam and Eve sinned, he took them from the garden and put them back in the world. So from the beginning of time, God intended for us to come out. 